The continuing role of systems integration within the Space Solar Power Program has been to contribute to the development of new satellite and system architecture concepts through an analytical process that is used to assess the value and requirements of new and advanced technologies that might be used in these systems. The process also examines the satellite concepts themselves in terms of the estimated mass, cost, and the ultimate price the public would have to pay for electricity delivered by these satellites. In our efforts to find ways that would reduce the projected cost of electricity produced by SSP, many different solar power satellite concepts have been proposed. They run the gamut from smaller 50 to 100 kilowatt systems based in low Earth orbit to huge multi-gigawatt systems in geosynchronous orbit, the same orbit populated by most of our communication satellites. Some transmit their power via microwave energy similar to what is produced in your microwave ovens at home. Others would use laser energy to transmit their power to the ground. One of the earliest concepts proposed and examined over the past several years is the Sun Tower, a long tower-like configuration with circular concentrated solar collectors running along its length like petals on a long stem flower. At the bottom of the Sun Tower is a large microwave transmitter that always faces the Earth as the satellite traverses its orbit. The design is simple and relatively easy to assemble in orbit. However, due to the Sun Tower's orientation in its orbit, each day the solar arrays would go from full solar illumination to full or partial shadowing caused either by the Earth or by the arrays themselves. Also, its unique configuration requires that the Sun Tower grow to many tens of kilometers in length in order to deliver the desired power levels to Earth. This means that the electrical cables bringing power from the solar arrays to the transmitter would become extremely long and heavy. The way for a solar power satellite to avoid the varying illumination problem is to employ an orbital configuration that allows the satellite to maintain its solar arrays pointed at the sun while letting its transmitter slowly rotate so that it is always facing the Earth. This was the design approach taken by the early solar power satellite study performed in the 1970s. More recent concepts developed during the course of our current studies use a large rotating reflector to redirect the microwave energy to Earth. This latter concept has been named an abacus reflector due to the appearance of its two-dimensional array structure. While the added array dimension reduces the electrical cable lengths over those in the Sun Tower design, the weight of these cables, along with the power management equipment, still forms a significant fraction of the total satellite mass. With this in mind, another concept was proposed that would substantially reduce power management and distribution mass. This concept, called the Integrated Symmetrical Concentrator, or ISC for short, would redirect the sun's energy by reflection, rather than first converting it to electricity and then distributing it over long cable lines. All of the concepts I've talked about have one thing in common. They are all too large to be brought to orbit and deployed in a single launch. For this reason, the systems integration team is currently looking at small, laser-based systems that can be launched and deployed as independent spacecraft without further assembly. These modular spacecraft would become part of larger constellations operating in or near geo-orbits. Such units could presumably start delivering power as soon as they are in place, and the delivered power could be increased as each new satellite joins the constellation. One of the most important systems integration functions performed for the SSP program is to develop computer models of these proposed satellite concepts. These models include key performance and cost characteristics of the many different technologies used in the satellite configuration. This information is provided by technologists from NASA, industry, and academia that make up the Space Solar Power Study Team. By having such models available, our systems integration analysts are able to compare the potential performance of the various satellite concepts and the benefits of using one technology over another and pass this information back to the system designers and technologists. Through this iterative process, the whole project team ultimately becomes involved in producing the best possible design and technology approach for each concept. We're not there yet, but as we continue to come up with new and better concepts, as well as more accurate ways to model them, we feel that it's just a matter of time before we arrive at an SSP system design that we can confidently put forth as an economically viable alternative or supplement to more conventional and less environmentally friendly energy sources.